What's up fellow bookworms and welcome to my channel. My name is Dylan and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Goodreads app. So you can use Goodreads on your computer, whether it's a desktop, laptop, whatever. That's the browser version. We are going to be specifically looking at the app today. I'm going to be using an iPhone, but I think pretty much everything will be true no matter what device you're using, as long as you're using the Goodreads application. And if you're unfamiliar with what Goodreads is, it is basically a social network for bookworms like you and I. It's a place where you can log the books that you've read, you can shelf books and put them on a particular list. So for example, you can have a list of all the books that you want to read all in one place. You can even add friends on there and you can follow certain individuals. It's a really neat app and we are going to look at all of that in a lot more detail in just a second. So let's get right into it. I've got the app loaded up on my phone. I'm going to assume that you've already got the app downloaded on your particular device. If you don't have it downloaded yet, go ahead and pause the video and go download the app. Of course, if you're using an Apple product, you'll download it from the App Store. If you're using an Android, you'll download it from your particular App Store, whatever that might be called for your device. But once we actually have the app opened up on our phones, it automatically loads into the Home tab. And this is where you're going to probably do the most sort of social interactions that you're going to do on the Goodreads app. This is where you can connect with your friends. This is where you're going to see what your friends have read, what your friends have been up to, all that good stuff. Basically any activities that your friends do, this is where they're going to show up. So we can like what they've done, we can comment on what they've done and so forth. Now, probably the feature that you're going to use the most on the Goodreads app is going to be looking up books. So for this example, I'm just gonna search Stephen King and we'll look at his books that are going to pop up. So you can see the first one there is The Shining. We have It, we have The Gunslinger and so forth. We can also search uh, by book title. We can search just by author, but there's even an easier way to search books than that. If you just don't wanna type out an author's name or a title of a book, you can select this little camera icon that's also located in the search bar. When you do that and you give the app permission to use your camera, you can go ahead and scan the cover of any particular book that you might be interested in. So I happen to have Stephen King's It handy. And you can see that by scanning the cover of the book, it's brought up the book page, which leads us into the next section of our little tutorial. So once you've found the book you're looking for, it's going to bring up the book and author page. And you're just gonna get a little bit of everything about the book. So right from the top, you're of course going to get the book cover. You probably already are going to know what the book looks like though. And then if you swipe to the right, you just get a little bit of information about the book. You get a publisher date, publisher, ISBN, and then you just get a little brief author bio as well. Underneath that, you're going to see what's probably, in my opinion, the most important thing on this page, and that is the star rating for whatever book you've looked up. So in this case, we're using it as our example, and you can see that it has 4.25 stars out of five stars. That means that it's rated really well. You can also see the number of times that it's been rated and how many actual like written out reviews there are. So in this case, there are almost a million ratings and about 32,000 written reviews. When you scroll down, you get the synopsis of the book. We of course won't take the time to read that, but it gets, just gives you a, a nice little starting point with whatever book you are looking up. And then if you scroll down a bit further, that's where you get to those community reviews, those written reviews. And you can of course peruse these, see what others have said about this particular book. When you select this little arrow, it's going to open up all of the reviews that have been written about the particular book that you're looking at. Again, we won't look at all those, but when you scroll down a bit further, you see some related books. In this case, these are all books that were also written by Stephen King. Underneath that, you get some, I guess, just related to the genre books. So you see there's Dracula, The Exorcist, Misery, Thinner, uh, Harry Potter somehow is <laughs> recommended here. So you get the idea. If you're interested in it, 
then Goodreads says, here are some other books you might also be interested in. And then at the very bottom of the page are just like some genre tags for the book. So again, our example being it, it's tagged as horror, fiction, thriller, fantasy, audiobook, classics, mystery, adult, supernatural, paranormal, etc. Now, if you scroll back up to the top, there's actually something that I failed to mention, and it's this green square, this green rectangle, rather, that says, want to read. So when you click the little drop-down arrow next to that, it allows you to add this particular book to a shelf. So you can add it to your want to read shelf, which is, again, where you would add books that you would be interested in reading sometime later. You can add it to your currently reading shelf if you are, of course, currently reading it, or you can go ahead and add it to your read shelf. And that, of course, is going to be the shelf where you put all the books that you've read. If we wanted to create another shelf, we could do it from here. So I don't know exactly what that shelf might be, but you could create a, an additional shelf that's not one of these three and add the book to that shelf. But say that you've read this book, you can go ahead and rate it from this page as well. You see there are five kind of grayed out stars. You can go ahead and rate it five stars, four stars, one star, whatever, just by tapping on the amount of stars you wanna give it. I haven't actually read this book yet, so I'm going to remove my rating for now. So let's go ahead and navigate back to the Home tab. We're just going to click the Home at the very bottom left there. And you'll notice at the top right, there is a little notifications bell with a number five on it. That means I have currently five notifications. So we'll go ahead and open that up and I have blurred these notifications to protect the identities of anyone who may be mentioned in these notifications. But you can see that there's the gen just general notifications tab. There's messages where if someone wanted to reach out to you on here, they could send you a message. Those will appear here as well. And then there's also the friend request tab as well. So you can go ahead and accept or deny friend requests. You can also access my friends from this page at the top right. This is where you would add friends. You can click that plus symbol and then just search for whoever you might like to add as a friend. But we're gonna back out of all that and go back again to the home menu. And we're going to then look next at the next tab over from home, which is my books. So when we click on that my books tab, it opens up this particular window where you can see there is the want to read shelf that I don't currently have any books in. And then there's the read shelf that just is going to log all the books I've read since using Goodreads. And we can also create a new shelf from here if we would like. We won't do that in this tutorial, but if you wanted to create a third shelf, you could do that from here. Below that is a little section called your reading activity. And this is going to be where you can access your Kindle notes and highlights. I actually checked before I started filming this video and somehow my Kindle is connected to another Goodreads account. I don't wanna throw anyone under the bus, but I think my wife has connected our Amazon account to her Goodreads account. So I can't show you all the features there, but there's not a whole lot to show. Any notes or highlights that you've made on a Kindle book will appear under this tab so that you can quickly revisit those and just kind of get a refresher on anything that you've taken a note on, any notes you've made, or any highlights you've made in a particular book. So we'll just head back to your reading activity. And then you can also see there's something there called 2023 Reading Challenge. And I actually waited to do this so I could do it for this video. So what I really love about Goodreads is you can set a goal for yourself for the year and then it'll keep track of that goal, your progress towards that goal and so forth. So I'm gonna set my goal for 2023 right now since it is January 5th, I think. And so I'm gonna join the challenge and I'm gonna set my goal for 75 books for 2023. I'm gonna press start. And then any book that I read from this point on in the year, if I add the dates read to that book, then it's going to get filed away under this reading challenge. So that, I think that's just uh, really neat. And then the last little thing under this tab is 2022 year in books. So I read 63 books in 2022. It'll tell me how many pages I read. It'll tell me the shortest book that I read versus the longest book that I read. It'll tell me the average book length that I read the most popular book, the least popular book, and then it'll even tell me 
me my average rating for a book or I guess for all books in 2022. You can continue to scroll down. It'll show me some of the reviews that I've made and then just kind of a collage of all the books that I read in 2022. So it's pretty neat. I mean, this is just one of my favorite features about Goodreads because it just makes keeping track of what you've read super easy and kind of social as well. And then there's that middle tab that says discover. So when you press that, it's just going to tell you, you know, about some books that are related to other books you've read, books that Amazon, because Goodreads is an Amazon owned company, thinks that you might enjoy, books that it thinks you might actually want to purchase. <laughs> so, you know, you can just kind of look through these. Because I enjoyed Legends and Lattes, I might enjoy these books, Goodreads says. And then it shows me some trending books, books that are just popular right now on Goodreads. And most read this week, new releases this month, which I think is pretty neat. It keeps you kind of up to date. New releases this year. There's not that many because the year just started. And then lists that you can look through. So popular Kindle notes and highlights on Goodreads, Pulitzer winners, uh, mystery and thrillers in 2023. People just put together these lists of books. You can check those out if you're looking for your next read. The next tab over is the search tab. We've already discussed that at length. And then if we press the more tab at the very right hand side, it opens up this little menu. So we're not going to look at all these because most of them are things we've already discussed, but there are a few that I wanna to touch on. The first is my profile. So like I said, Goodreads is a social media app, I usually think of it just as a reference for book ratings. I just mostly use it to find reviews for a book I might be interested in, but there is a whole social aspect here. So if you go to your profile, you just kind of get a quick overview of you know, your reading profile. So it shows all the books that I've recently read. I can look at that 2022 year in books that we just looked at. I can uh, look at my reading challenge of this year. So far, I have zero books in there. And then it'll also say some of the books that I'm interested in, or rather the genres. And you can do a nice little bio. I have my YouTube channel linked at the top. If we press edit profile, it just allows me to change my name, change my little bio, change the link that I have there for my YouTube channel, and so forth. I can also edit my profile picture if I wanted. And then uh, I can also do updates. So if I wanted to post an update, I could. To make an update or post an update, you just select where it says update status. I've never actually done this before, and I don't know if many people do, but if I wanted to make a status, you know, I could just say, hi, that kind of thing. You know, whatever you wanted to post. Uh, I'm not actually going to post anything, but I could if I wanted to. And then going back to this more menu, you see there's top picks for you. This is again where you will get more recommendations for books that you might be interested in. And I actually don't think these are any different than the other set of recommendations that we got a little earlier. And then we've already looked at the reading challenge. We've already looked at how you can scan a book. We've looked at how you can add friends. We've not really looked at groups. So I actually, uh, just for the sake of this video, joined a group just so I could kind of show you what they're like. In my opinion, groups are, um, you know, pretty bare. There's really no reason I think to join a group, but you can see in this particular group, uh, hooked on books, there are the group rules. There are some discussions. So we'll just check these out. General discussions, uh, annual readathon schedule. And you can see that it's kind of like forum-ish. So if I read this, I could add a comment, reply, whatever. But yeah, groups are not really all that developed. It's not really like a Facebook group. It's I don't know. They might be something that you're interested in, but for me, I'm just not really interested in the groups feature. So going back to this more menu, there's best books of 2022, which is the really last thing that we're going to look at here. So Goodreads does their annual awards, their choice awards, where you as a Goodreads user get to vote on books in each particular genre. It's kind of just like a bracket, you know, like college basketball type deal where 
several books in a genre will get nominated, and then you, as a Goodreads user, can vote on which book in that genre should move on to the next round. Then there's another round of the same thing. And then I think the best book in all the genres finally, you know, compete <laughs> at the end. You, as a user, get to vote on which book of all the finalists was the best book of the year. And in 2022, it was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which was honestly my favorite book that I read in 2022. But that is it. That's my super quick little tutorial for Goodreads. Let me know in the comments below if it was helpful. If you have any further questions, I would love to try to do my best to answer those. And if you do enjoy book content, make sure you subscribe to this channel because that's exclusively what I do around here. I like to talk about books. I like to review books, recommend books, all that fun stuff. So make sure that you're in on the fun and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, I will see you in the next video.